Hi Choco from Splice and Post and I'm back with an exciting um, Adobe Speedrate CSX um, tutorial for you guys. Um, before I just start everything I just want to first of all apologize to all my subscribers and my viewers. Um, it's been over well over a month and a half uh, since I put out any kind of video or tutorial. Um, reason being I have um, two feature films and a spot that I'm working on. Um, I mean this is basically the work you know so um, it's kind of hard to get time to sit and do a tutorial you know I try the best I can to reply to your emails and your tweets and you know your comments uh, but I had to do this because um, I'm just getting so many requests for it and I just can't help it so I just have to show you guys um, how to do this this is basically uh, how to conform in uh, speed grade CSX now Conforming is just part of a typical post-production um, workflow, okay? It is basically how you get from your NLE, um, an Avid or Final Cut Premiere Pro, how you get from there into a mastering and a finishing environment like a smoke or a speed grade as, as it is now, um, the Vinci Resolve, or Quintel Pablo, or similar scratch, or base light, okay? So that is what conforming is about. And usually when you conform it from an NLE, um, usually the rule of thumb um, is to either export an EDL of your cut sequence or an XML or AAF. And even if, if you conform it in um, Avid DS, um, you require an AFE. Okay. Um, think about it with speed grade currently as I'm doing this tutorial. Uh, maybe hopefully in um, a next build um, is going to be supported. But... Um, AAFs and XMLs are not supported right now, currently. Okay, so um, you just um, you are pretty much stuck with the um, the traditional way of um, conforming, which is EDLs. Okay, and uh, with that being said, I'm just gonna take you guys quick into um, my media composer. So you take a look at um, the quick um, edit that I did. Uh, by the way, this is from uh, my upcoming feature film which um, hopefully should be hitting um, theaters uh, by next year, um, we hope and to. Um, these are from some B-rolls that were taken of uh, this particular scene here. All right, so I just went ahead and did a quick um, sequence here. Um, you guys could see the cuts and the way it's working out. All right, so I went ahead, exported an EDL of the sequence, and now we're gonna go to speed grid and conform it. All right, now there are two ways of doing this, okay? Um, there is not a hard way of doing things, all right? Um, I will say there is a more careful way of doing things because you got to be really careful when you're conforming, um, especially when you have B-rolls or even if your whole film was shot on DSLR, um, you have to realize that you don't have the ability of having like um, burnt in time code. So sometimes when you edit it just like that and there are no time codes in that and you have... Um, um, situations where you have one clip that is appearing in like four or five edits down the line in your sequence um, you might have certain problems with time code issues when you conform it so there is a more careful way of doing things all right but there is no hard way of doing things basically there are two methods the easy and the easier way all right and i'm going to show you both two methods all right uh, one thing that i'll advise you guys before you do any form of conforming i'll advise you go into your settings um, you click s on your keyboard to go in your settings and under editing, uh, make sure that you have your base frame rate set up right and your EDL frame rate set up right. Now, if your EDL frame rate is the same as your base frame rate, in my case, 24, uh, 24 um, frames per second, okay, you might just leave it the same because both of them are the same. But if in any case um, you're working in a different frame rate and your EDLs are in a different frame rate, you could just go ahead and just... Um, um, select this here and you could go ahead and just type in whatever you want to okay I'm gonna leave mine the same and I'm gonna get back into my desktop all right now the first method of doing this which is the easy way is you have to make sure that you have the footage whatever footage or whatever clip that makes up your EDL has to be populated in your desktop okay so if your sequence was um, you know about a hundred footage that was used in that cut okay make sure that all of them are populated here in your desktop 
all right and if you guys take a look at my desktop here all the footage that is populated here if i go back to media composer you could see they are the same clips that make up the sequence here okay all right so i hope i didn't lose anybody all right i'll say it again make sure that whatever clip that makes up the edl is populated here in your desktop all right all right so with that being done now we know that the clips are populated and they're ready to go all right i'm going to go ahead and pull up my edl which is right here selects 18 all right underscore sorry scene 18 underscore selects one edl okay now what you do now is you click this plus sign or drag and drop it and make a new timeline okay so i'm going to do it and usually when you do that you might have some um, error messages and stuff coming up. Um, I'll advise you take a look at what it is and if it is something that um, you could just um, you know just forget about it and continue um, you could do that because usually you're gonna have a lot of you know error messages especially when you have a time code issue so right but if you know that everything was done right you just go ahead and ignore it and just go ahead so I'm just gonna add and as you could see okay it's telling me that um, the time codes um, okay, my EDL is indicating a different parameter and stuff, which is fine. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just um, just uh, ignore that. And as you can see, I have my sequence here. All right, a sequence um, that was created in uh, Media Composer. All right, but um, as a stance, if I go into my viewer, um, there is nothing there. It is telling me that the reels are not loaded. All right, so um, I'm gonna go back, and this is where the conforming comes in. So now, just make sure that. Um, this desktop is um, visible where your clips are. That is the clips that make up the EDL. Okay. And under your timeline tab, go into your reels. And you could see that the reels are all grayed out. All right. So they need something to link to. All right. And all you have to do is just with a click of a button, it says load from desktop. All right. And if you show that all the clips are loaded here in your desktop, all right, all you have to do is load from desktop. All right, I'm going to get another the same error message I had before, but it's okay because I know everything is uh, matching up right. And as you can see, um, it's confirmed. How easy is that? <laughs> All right, so this is uh, my cut from um, um, Avid. Okay, as you can see, and I could just go ahead and play through. I'm having a problem here, um, and it's, it's a frame rate issue, but I could just go ahead and change the frame, my base frame rate so that it plays right. Okay. But I'm just, um, over here, you guys could just take a look at it and see that um, this actually works, okay? Whatever you see here has nothing to do with uh, conform issues. It's just uh, me just being lazy. I don't want to um, take too much time on this tutorial, okay? And I made the uh, frame rate, uh, my base frame rate 24 uh, frames per second instead of 23.97, okay? But um, the cuts are all there, okay? If you take a look at it um, here in Media Composer, they are the same cuts, okay? So um, this is the easy way of doing it. And right now you could just go ahead and just start grading and you're ready to go, all right? The second way of doing this, which is the much easier way of doing this, okay, is let me just go ahead and just get rid of this real quick. Is inside your NLE, um, whether it's on a Media Composer or Premiere or Final Cut, all right? You, add, you export um, a one clip sequence. Okay, so you could export a QuickTime or you could export a DPX or whatever that you want to export it at. But it's going to be just everything, one render file sent out. Okay, so export everything together. In this case, I use the DNX HD um, 175X, which is like the highest quality. Okay, and I exported a full sequence. All right, and let me go there and you could see. I have the sequence here, so as I scrub it through, you can see my cuts and everything are together. So it's just one clip, all right? Now, the way this works, the way the second method works is you're going to now create a new timeline with a new um, footage or the export that is from your NLE, okay, with the cuts embedded. Now, only problem is, let me go to my viewer. Everything is now one clip, okay? But now you will need them to be in reels so that you could grade them separately. All right. And the way to do that, I'm going to go back here. Okay. Go back to where your EDL is. All right. And now pay attention. This is the trick here. You click on the EDL. You drag and you drop it on top of the clip. 
Now you're going to see two arrows uh, facing opposite side. They are two green arrows. When you see that, just let it go. And voila, as you can see, the EDLs, all right, used the cuts that were in the EDLs basically to basically split your clip into reels. So right now, if I go back into my viewer, they are the same cuts, all right? And now, as you can see, I'm in the right frame rate here, so I don't have the kind of um, ghosting that I was having before in the first one. As I said, the first one was not a problem with my conforming. It was just me not trying to go through the hurdle of changing my frame rates and stuff, all right? So now you have the cuts, and um, you're ready to go. And you could go ahead and just grade them and do whatever I wanted to do with them, okay? So these are the two ways of conforming EDLs um, in speed grade, all right? You could choose. So if you know that um, if you can't really trust the fact that you don't have um, the time codes are not going to match and you're going to have errors and stuff, you might want to go with a second one, okay? Render out a DPX or a high quality, maybe ProRes 422 HQ or whatever, all right? Render everything, your sequence, the whole sequence out, bring it into a speed grade, and send an EDL out of it your NLE to be used to split them into reels and you could just go ahead and um, conform it that way and grade from there. Alright, so thanks for watching.